How's it guys, this is Davey FP and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. And on this video, I'm going to take you guys through the ultimate guide to the upcoming Game Week 3. So as you guys know in the ultimate guides, you have the usual talking points such as the transfer plan and the captaincy. And this season we've actually added a stats component and instead of looking at a watch list, I'm going to look at a stats list. But you guys would have seen the same format in the Game Week 2 Ultimate Guide. So if you enjoyed that video, you're probably going to enjoy this one. So hit a like if you like the new look of the Ultimate Guide. Now the big talking points about the upcoming Game Week 3 are should you sell Robertson? I'll be going through that kind of debate. It's a very personal debate as I own Robertson and my own FPL team. And the second talking point that's pretty large this week is Leon Bailey and Neto. Should you take them out? And if you are, who are the best replacements? So in the comments down below, let me know how Game Week 2 went. If you have any questions about the upcoming Game Week 3, maybe a transfer plan, maybe you're trying to run through some logic with me, drop it in the comments down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Otherwise, you can always do it on my Discord channel, link down in the description below. With that being said, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So going on to our stats list, I'm going to be going over the team's component first. We're going to be looking at XG and XG conceded. We're going to highlight the top five teams, bottom five teams on both of these two stats to give you guys some teams to target from attacking and defensive point of view. Now the first thing I want to just put out there is that we will be going over the game week one and two stats combined and please remember this is a very small sample size so when you get onto the players this is kind of two game weeks of data very kind of small sample size so please take it with a pinch of salt but I still think these stats can be quite valuable. So let's start off with the highest XG team and it's going to be no surprise there or maybe a little bit of a surprise because they haven't got off to the exact best start to the Prem it's going to be Liverpool. So the XG of 4.06 with the opening two games looking pretty good for them. But as I said, no kind of surprises here as Liverpool are super attacking side. Now in the next three fixtures, they have United away, Bournemouth at home and Newcastle at home. And I think that Bournemouth at home game is going to be a perfect option for the captaincy on Mo Salah. Now the big debate this week is to go for double defense or double attack. And with these fixtures coming up and the high XG, the attack currently is going to be favored. Then going on to our second team, and also a little bit of a surprise there is it's not going to be Man City, it's actually going to be Arsenal, with an XG just smaller than Liverpool's of 4.05. Fixtures upcoming against Bournemouth away, Fulham at home, and Villa at home look very appealing, and if you guys don't have an Arsenal triple up already, I would heavily consider going for one. The next team though is going to be that team, Man City, with an XG of 3.48, fixtures upcoming, Newcastle away, Crystal Palace at home, and Nottingham Forest at home, and that Forest fixture, as you guys will see in the XG conceded, is going to be a plum fixture for a Haaland or De Bruyne captain. Now rounding off our top four is going to be another very good side. It's going to be Chelsea with an XG of 3.29. Fixtures are coming are going to be Leeds away, Leicester at home and Southampton away. And when you guys do see the XG conceded, you're going to really favor these Chelsea attacking fixtures. Now what I quickly want to point out about the top four sides is you can see these are all very quality teams. After two game weeks already, we are seeing the emergence of the traditional kind of top six sides. And that's what the pricing this season, you can almost get a team of just traditional top six players. So please keep that in mind in your transfers upcoming and we'll keep that in mind in the transfer plan heading into the next few game weeks. Now the final team might be a little bit of a surprise to you but they have actually had a very good start to this season. It's going to be Brighton with an XG of 3.21. Fixtures are coming against West Ham away, Leeds at home and Fulham away and to be honest those three look actually pretty good this season. Now these are going to be teams that you guys should target from an attacking point of view. These are teams that are getting some good expected stats. If you don't like expected goals you can always go over to Fantasy Football Fix and rank whatever stat you want. But now that we've had the top scorers, let's go to the lowest scorers. And the reason for this is these are going to be teams that you target for the opponents. For example, if Liverpool are playing Bournemouth upcoming, you're going to favor that Liverpool defense because Bournemouth's XG is pretty low. You can see there Bournemouth with an XG of 0.68, the lowest in the Prem over the first two fixtures. And when you look at the upcoming games, Arsenal at home, Liverpool away and Wolves at home, mighty tough fixtures coming up. So if your team is playing Bournemouth, pretty good chance of a clean sheet and has a Ramsdale and double Liverpool defense, I'm just hoping for the best. Now a team that's actually quite surprising is going to be Leicester with an XG of 0.98. Now Leicester have actually scored a few goals in game week 1 and game week 2, 4 goals to be exact. So you guys can see in terms of XG, they're overperforming our collage margin. Now the next team is going to be Southampton with an XG of 1.69. Now I'm going to run through these kind of teams quite quickly because you guys can just pause the screen right now, check the upcoming fixtures and that's going to be the teams that you should target from a defensive point of view. We then have Everton with 1.8 and finally Nottingham Forest with 1.9 and these are going to be the bottom five teams in terms of XG and definitely target the teams you see on the right hand side. A lot of the teams that kind of pop out to me are going to be Chelsea assets. They look like pretty strong kind of defensive options going into game week 3, 4 and 5 and Nottingham Forest have quite a hot selection with Spurs at home and Man City away coming up. So now let's flip from XG to XG conceded. This is basically how many goals these teams should have theoretically or from an expectation point of view conceded in the opening two game weeks. 
The number one team from a defensive point of view by quite a far margin is going to be Man City with 0.43 and with some nice fixtures coming up I would definitely consider a double up in that Man City defense. Another surprise team that have had a very good start to the season are going to be Brighton yet again. Top 5 XG, top 5 XG conceded with 1.39. Now will that trend continue? I do think so. West Ham haven't been attacking that well. Leeds are a surprise team and Fulham are a newly promoted side. So I'm expecting some more clean sheets for Brighton coming up. Another team that's had a good start to the season is going to be Brentford with 1.45. And considering that they played United recently, I'm actually quite impressed by that stat. Now if you check the fixtures upcoming, there's some of the best fixtures from now till game week 8 when a lot of people are going to be wild carding. So Fulham away, Everton at home and Crystal Palace away. Surely there's some clean sheets in there. The next teams are going to be also some high flyers, Arsenal and then Chelsea, 1.63 and 1.8 respectively. And with some nice fixtures coming up for both teams, I would heavily consider these defenses. But now going on to the bottom five teams, in terms of XG conceded, what this is going to mean is if your attackers are playing these five teams, you're surely going to be in for some points. The first team, no surprise there, Nottingham Forest had a pretty bad start to the season, even though they did win game week two. I just think from a stats point of view, you've got to target this team. And with Everton up next, followed by Spurs and then Man City, I'm expecting them to concede quite a few. The interesting thing though is that up next is going to be Everton at 3.99 and they play Nottingham Forest. So what's this game going to actually end out in game week three? It's going to be a high scoring one, a low scoring one, who kind of knows. But if you do have assets from both these two teams, they might be on the score sheet. West Ham come up next, which is a little bit of a surprise, but they did play Man City game week one. So maybe a little bit expected there. Have had a relatively rough start to the season, but I do expect them to rebound with that quality team they have. Leicester up next, Danny Ward owners look away because we all expected Leicester defense to not be that great. But at least against Southampton at home, they could rack up their first clean sheet of the season. And then finally, if you are a fan of this team, probably expected, it's Manchester United with an XG conceded of 3.57. Now Liverpool at home up next does all look great for those Man United defenders. But if you guys are a Luis Diaz and a Salah owner, you're probably smiling right now. So this is going to wrap up the kind of team selection. We got the top five and bottom five teams of XG and XG conceded. Now you guys know which teams to target and which teams to avoid. But now going on to our player portion of the watch list or the stats list, I'm going to be covering XG but non-penalty. The reason for this is as you guys know, a penalty is going to have quite a high XG. Who kind of knows when a player will get a penalty? Yes, it makes them a better option. But for this stats list, I've decided to take it away. Now coming up in first place is not going to be in first place in most people's hearts. It's going to be Darwin Nunes with 1.83 expected goals non-penalty. Now you guys know that he saw red, he's wearing red, and he is suspended for I think the next three games. So your owners got quite unlucky, especially if you did wild card him in. Now the fixtures that he will miss are going to be on the right hand side there. So the next three look pretty strong from an attacking point of view. And that's why it's super unlucky for you Darwin owners. Luckily though that you can make an easy switch to Jesus with 1.6 XG and with fixtures against Bournemouth, Fulham and Villa coming up, that transfer will probably pay off. Now if you guys did watch my transfer plan and potentially my team selection tomorrow, you guys will know all about Gross. So the Brighton midfielders had an absolute explosive start to the season, 1.58 expected goals, his XA is looking pretty strong as well and with some nice fixtures coming up, he definitely could be a nice differential at 5.6 million. But you guys already know about him, I've spoken about him enough in my transfer plan and potentially as I mentioned in my team selection tomorrow. Another player that's risen in price to 6.1 is going to be Rodrigo with an XG of 1.44 for Leeds. Now that Leeds fixture up coming against Chelsea at home is putting me off, but I think that they have a good chance of actually scoring there. So that is a little bit of a warning to you Chelsea double defense owners. Now after that, they do have Brighton away, which is a tough game as well. So for me, Rodrigo and the Leeds assets are wait and see. And then finally, as expected, it's going to be Haaland 1.09, but this hasn't been much of an improvement after the game week one against West Ham. And that's a little bit surprising considering he played Bournemouth at home in game week two. Now I brought him in, I captained him, he did score more than Salah, so I guess we should be happy, but the fixtures upcoming are slightly tougher than they've had in game week 1 and 2. Newcastle away is a tough game, Crystal Palace at home, like Liverpool just showed, is a tough game as well. However, game week 5 against Nottingham Forest is probably going to be a triple captaincy consideration. So all in all, these top 5 teams are definitely going to be on my radar. I already own Jesus, Darwin's got a red card, I own Haaland, but Gross and Rodrigo provide nice little differentials. But now that we've covered XG, let's go over XA, which is going to be X assist. We want to give those kind of assisters a little bit more love. And what better way to start off with the assist king? It's going to be Kevin De Bruyne at 1.23. Now, Kevin De Bruyne had a massive game week two. I'm expecting him to have a massive season for Man City. And therefore, if you guys want to go for a differential premium, the Belgium internationals on my radar. Another player that should be on your radar, if not in your team, is going to be Ivan Tony with an XA of 1.19. A little bit surprising there, considering that he is a striker. You'd expect his XG to be higher, but Tony is a little bit of an interesting player. And the interesting thing about Brentford is they have some great fixtures coming up. Oli Watkins was another surprise there. Wasn't expecting too many strikers to be here, but who kind of knows? With 1.12 though for Aston Villa, I would probably avoid with hard fixtures coming up. We then have Harrison, who was a mainstay from the last video, so had a good game week one, a relatively respectable game week two, with an XA of 0.98. 
Now, like Rodrigo, it's a wait and see for me with Chelsea and Brighton coming up. But after that, I think that he could be a nice asset. And then finally, he's talked about the king, but the king of FPL, the absolute goat of FPL, Mo Salah is going to be up next with an XA of 0.94. Now, I think that was from last night's fixture against Crystal Palace because I think he had about eight or six key passes. So that's always going to do wonders for your XA. Now, I've already spoken about these Liverpool fixtures coming up. Manchester United away, Bournemouth at home, Newcastle at home. I can actually see a couple of game weeks where Mo Salah will get the armband. But this is going to kind of wrap up our stats list and our player department. So let me know if this was useful to you guys. Do you like the teams and the player ratings? I think for my own team, this is quite useful and it definitely is more useful than kind of a general watch list. But now going on to the first talking point of this video. And as I mentioned, Bailey and Neto on a lot of people's kind of transfer out lists. But who would you replace them with? So that's exactly what I'm going to show you guys in this kind of talking point. And the next slide, I'm going to be going over players that are less or equal to 6.5 million in terms of fantasy football's Opta stats. So what I did was I went over to Fantasy Football Fix. I put this kind of price restriction in. I then went to Expected Stats. As you guys know, I love XG, XA, XFPL points. That's Expected FPL points over the first two game weeks. And then I also sorted by Expected FPL points. So you guys can see on screen right now the top six players in terms of these kind of criteria. And there are a few surprises here. So Gross and Rodrigo are no surprise. They have had great starts to their FPL seasons and their Premier League seasons. And that's why those top two are heavily on most people's radars. Now, there are some players here that I would avoid. Jorginho, for example, he is on penalties. So that's why his expected goals, expected FPL points is quite high. But then Potence could be a differential, but I think most people are put off Wolves. Now, next up, Martinelli is 100% the option that I would go for. If you guys don't have Martinelli, I would do wonders to bring him into my squad. And I'll talk about that a little bit later on. And then finally, his colleague Xhaka is actually going to be on this list. Had a really strong game week too, but I would probably avoid him. And therefore, the three that I would potentially look at are going to be Gross, Rodrigo, and then finally Martinelli. Now, between Gross and Rodrigo, I prefer Gross because of the better fixtures. Brighton have better fixtures than Leeds over the next two. Then you can always switch out to him if you have some money in the bank. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, this is only two game weeks of data. So take this with a pinch of salt. There are some other players that I would obviously have here. You guys know I've spoken about someone like an Anthony Gordon, a Damari Gray. They could be a, but Everton have had a slow start to the season. But now to make things a little bit easier for you, if you don't have the budget, I've gone for 5.5 or less. And unfortunately, this makes it a little bit of a tough debate to have. The reason I'm saying this is that the 5.5 midfielders are not too strong this FPL season, and that's why your options are kind of reduced. Now, in terms of Potent, Xhaka, Holberg, Jensen, Rice, and March, I'd say Jensen's probably my favorite in that department. Now, Solly March is actually playing as a wing back for Brighton, and therefore, if he was going to be kind of a defensive player, I would definitely have him, but because he is classified as a midfielder, I'd probably avoid. So as I mentioned, if you guys want to go for a Brentford attacker, we saw Tony had the great fixtures coming up. I wouldn't go for De Silva. I would go for Jensen as he currently has some pretty good stats and I think he's more nailed than the cheap alternative. But obviously, like my transfer plan, there are options like Anthony Gordon. There is Damari Gray that you could go for. I like the Everton midfielders because they are quite cheap and their fixtures upcoming are quite strong. Now, the next talking point is going to revolve around Andy Robertson. And as I mentioned in the introduction, this is a very personal talking point to me because I own him myself and I am considering transferring him out, to be honest. Now, first things first, if you guys have Andy Robertson and you want to take him out for a like for like, someone like a Diaz, a Walker, Cucurella, and you only want to make one transfer, I wouldn't do it. I think Andy Robertson is fine for the upcoming game weeks. And that's why the only reason I would take Andy Robertson out is that if you guys want to upgrade your midfoot apartment to Luis Diaz. So as you guys can see there, I've added a number. That's going to be the projected points from game week three to game week eight. I went over to Fantasy Football Fixes projected tool and I pulled these two data points. But just keep in mind that these are projected numbers and these might not come true. The other thing to note is I would actually bump up Lewis Diaz now that Darwin has that red card. I think Diaz's expected minutes are going to skyrocket because he is going to be nailed for every single game for at least the foreseeable future. So take those projected points with a pinch of salt as I've mentioned, as I do consider these players to be quite equal. Now, the unfortunate thing with Andy Robertson is that the Liverpool defense has started off quite slow. We have had some injury concerns there. Matty, Konate getting injured. We then had Nat Phillips playing last night who got kind of bossed by Zaha for that goal, which was quite disappointing and wiped out my double Liverpool clean sheet. And as we saw the Liverpool fixtures, United away, Bournemouth at home. I think those two fixtures are more attacking sided and I can actually see United scoring on Monday. So that's why the only situation and the one that I'm considering is that if you do want to upgrade Neto or Bailey to Luis Diaz, and therefore downgrading Robertson to a cheaper defender, that's the only situation where I would do this transfer. But this is going to be something that you guys have to decide on if you want to change your kind of structure of your team 100%, but also consider the fact that the Liverpool fixtures upcoming are quite strong. We saw the XG conceded and the XG of some of their opposition being quite low, and therefore the clean sheets could actually be secured. So just keep that in mind when you do consider this move, but I do think it's quite appealing because kind of an Andy Robertson versus a 5.5 midfielder versus a 5 million defender and Luis Diaz is far more appealing to me than keeping the Scottish fullback. 
Let me know in the comments down below what you guys are doing. I will discuss this in my team selection tomorrow. So keep your eyes out for that because I could actually be taking a minus four hit going to game week three. Now the final talking point to go over is going to revolve around captaincy and this week is actually a pretty split week to be honest. Yes we do have our kind of favorite options but there are some differential teams with great fixtures coming up and I think they might actually reap the rewards. But 100% the safest option and the most popular option this week will be Mo Salah and he has a fixture against Manchester United away. Now I do think if Man United did not lose to Brentford 4-0 well, this would be a whole different story. I think this might be a replication of last season where I didn't captain Mo Salah against United and he went absolutely nuclear. But fortunately this season United look bad but Liverpool are also not on their best form and that's why this game might actually be quite close. But yes currently Mo Salah is the safe option, the popular option to go for but in my opinion there is a differential captain that I think will be quite nice. And that player is going to be none other than Gabriel Jesus, started off preseason quite well, started off this season quite well, game week 1 didn't score but game week 2 went absolutely massive and that's why with Bournemouth away up next I really do favour the Arsenal attacker. Now special mention goes out to Haaland but I do prefer Jesus to Haaland, Newcastle's XG conceded is better than Bournemouth's XG conceded and I just think Jesus might be a bigger talisman than Haaland at Man City. So yes, to be honest, these two assets, I don't think you can go wrong. My heart is currently going to be probably on Salah because I am a Liverpool fan. He plays on Monday night, but I actually do think Jesus is going to be the better option this week. But you guys can let me in the comments down below. Are there any other options that I'm missing out? There are some nice fixtures uh, potentially for this game week. We have Reese James and Mason Mount playing leads away. That could be a massive game for Chelsea. But I think between these two, you're getting your differential and your safe option. But this is the best you're up for the guys. Hope you did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like it if you did and subscribe if you didn't have subscribed yet. I'll be seeing you guys for the team selection tomorrow. So make sure that those bell notifications are on or you are following me on Twitter to get the notification. But I'm Insani Ops, it's been Dave the FPL and I'm out. Cheers, bye.